Welcome to Faith Revival Place, also Faith Revival Holiness Church. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Almighty God, we love you, we adorate you, we thank you, Lord, for all your sacred tea, all your holiness, all that you give unto those that are obedient to your callings. Father, we pray for the for those that are in great turmoil because they're not walking like they should with you. And Father, I pray for them to repent and turn to you, the living God, the only one that can help them. The only one that can help all humanity is you, O oh Father God. And all humanity, most of it, has been tricked into believing that government can help them, or their doctor, or this or that, and when only the one that can help them through life is you, God Almighty, the Ariyara, Ariyasha, our provider and our sacred tea of saving that you do in our lives. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for our lives. We thank you, Lord, that through you there's life, and life more abundantly. Without you there's only death, because the death of the devil is everywhere on this earth. But through you we receive life, and through accordance with your ways we have life. And through living as the footsteps of the Messiah, we receive life. And through the word of God, we receive the life of God and the light and the power thereof. And we thank you, Father. We, we seek your face. We, we plant the word of God in the, our holy temples. And may, may it put a blaze and, and make us bright as the little morning stars that you proclaim at the end days that we all would become. For the marking out of the saints of God that you do. That it speaks of these things in Ephesians 1. And those things will be accomplished. The, the latter in the former reign. And those that have of obedience. But woe to the disobedient, for they will receive your judgment, likewise the rest of the world. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that people will be obedient to you, matter what, matter if they're the only one in that town that is obedient to you fully. Father, I pray for them to be strong and to understand that there, there will be others that will come. That will be with you a hundredfold. But we must pray for the lukewarm to repent for their sins and their sicknesses and their diseases. And that they must repent of these things and come to the grace of God. For the grace of God, his mercy endures forever. But if they choose to be lukewarm more in the world than in you, well, the warning is there in the Bible that you will shoo them away like they are not part of, of anything but the world. So the warning has been given to the lukewarm, which is more than the righteous, that they must repent of their ways and turn to the Holy God. They must repent for turning their face to governments that are run by Satan. And we thank you, Father, we thank you, Father, that you reign. Your holy power endures forever. In your name we pray. Amen. Now today's miniature sermon or lesson is Katuban. Mishli. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Mishli is Proverbs. Katuban is writings. Prepare your heart before the Lord. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1 to 33, we will examine, read, and let it become part of us today. A person is responsible to prepare his or her heart, but now the tongue speak is from Yahweh. All the men and women's ways are pure in his own view, but Yahweh waits the spirit. If you entrust all you do to Yahweh, 
Your plans will achieve success. Yahweh made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Even for the wicked on the day of disaster. Yahweh detests all those who are proud heart. He uh, ascends that they will go on, they will not go unpunished. Grace and truth atones for iniquity. What atones for iniquity? Grace and truth. And all the people turn from evil through the reverency of Yahweh. You turn from evil, people of this earth, through reverency of God. The reverency of God is the beginning of wisdom, it says, as well. And when a, a man or woman's ways please Yahweh, he makes even the men and women enemies be at peace with him. Better a little with righteous than a huge income with injustice. Better with a little righteous than a huge income with injustice. A person may plan his path, but Yahweh directs his steps. Who directs your steps? Yahweh. Divine in inspiration is on the lips of the kings, so that his mouth must be faithful when he judges. The balance and scales of justice have their origins in Yahweh. And all the weights in the, the bags are his doing. It is, it is abomination for kings to do evil. It is abomination for the politicians to do evil. It's abomination for the ju judges to do evil. It is abomination for the mayors to do evil. It's abomination for this and that to do evil. For the throne is made secure by righteousness. That means it's only secured by the right, right relationship with God. That when someone has authority and power, it's only secured by having a right relationship with God. The kings should delight in the righteous lips. The politicians should delight in a right relationship with God. A, and he should love someone who speaks what is right. The king's anger is the herd of death. And the one who is wise will uh, uh, please it. And when the king's face brightens, it means life. For the favor is like the clouds that bring spring wane. How much better than gold is the gain of wisdom? Yes, rather than money chosen to gain understanding, avoid evil is the highway of the upright. He who watches his steps preserve his life. The proud goes before destruction. The arrogant be before failure. Better is to be humble among the poor than share the spoils with the proud. He who has skill is a matter who succeeds. He who trusts in Yahweh will be happy. A wise heart person is said to have discernment. Sweetness of preach adds to learning. Common sense, conservativeness is a foundation of life to the one who has it. Whereas the fools are punished by their own folly, by their own, they're punished by their own libertarianism, their liberalism. They're punished. The wise man's heart teaches his mouth, and to the lips he adds learning. Pleasing words are like honeysuckle. Sweet to the taste and healing to the body. 
There can be a way which seems right to a person, but at, at the end, their only ways are death. Worthless people dig up evil gossip. It is like a scorned fire on their lips. Deceitful person stirs up strife. A slanderer cannot separate even close friends. Violent people lure their neighbors astray and leads him or her into evil ways. One who winks acknowledge is planning deceit. So those that have long winking eyes plan deceit. One who pinches his uh, lips together has always done wrong. Well, the, the hair, white hair is a crown of honor obtained by righteous living. He who con controls his temper is better than a war hero. He who rules his spirit better than he who captures a city. One can cast lots into one's lap, but the decision comes from Yahweh. But the decision comes from Yahweh. So we must hearken our ways unto the Lord. We must prepare our hearts to do what is right and holy, not to what this one or that one says, but to what God says. What God says is the final word, the final way of life for a true Jew or true Christian's life. Those that follow these ways will not depart and they will live in a holy, honorable way when they stand before God's throne. For the Lord God will say, these ones did my will correctly. And these ones over here didn't. It's that simple. Which way will you go? Will you go 100% for the Lord? Or you will be a wicked person and only go 80% or none at all. Which way will you do? Will you be an honorable person today and follow the ways of the Lord? Or will you not? For the Lord God Almighty says, If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And these are the days when he does it. It's a cutting off of the lukewarm. For your days has passed, long past, long ago. But God's grace was efficient enough to allow it to go a little bit further. But now the Lord says, no more will my churches and my synagogues be full of lukewarm people. You either will be on hot and fire with the Lord, or I will say, I don't know you. This is my holy word speaketh. I saith, now it is now the time to repent, O lukewarm Christians, lukewarm Jews, for I will not notice you no more. And you will be noticed by the world. You'll be noticed by everybody else, but not by me no more. I will not see you as part of my family no longer, lukewarm ones. For you have been warned much in the word of God, both Old and New Testament, not to stray from the covenants of God. So why have you done this? Why have you entertained the worldly governments, the worldly ways, and then you say you can still be going on Saturday and Sunday and still be holy? The God of Almighty says, no, you will not. For the church cannot save or not even your word the word directs your path but the salvation comes from what the cross has done salvation comes through all the legacy of the past listening to them and seeing that what they have to say and salvation comes through acknowledging that what was done on the cross saves your soul from the pit of hell but you must walk the ways of God. You must not just do a fake salvation and then later do it your way. You must live that way for the rest of your life. There's no excuse for you lukewarm Christians and Jews being this way. For I have said many times and warnings to you to correct yourselves. 
but you have not. You rather do it a religious way than a relationship way with me, says the Lord. For now is the day of deliverance for many of you. For now is the day of many of you to turn your life around and live it for the Yahweh that saved your soul. His, the very image that I sent to you over 2,000 years ago. He walked a perfect life. He walked a perfect life. And through that life you find life. And through the cross you find liberty and justice. Not through your countries, but through the cross you do. And through the star you realize that the star shined. Showing that the seal was met when he was born. And the cross was the, the unwoving of sin of this earth through the deception of understanding that God is the only one that can do this. God is the only one that can save your soul. So don't, don't look into your churches. Don't look into even words. Don't even look into your vehicles and everything else. Nothing can save you. But the, what was done through the cross. And the prophets testify of these things. And they're still echoing things that must be meant. So meet those things. And do those things. Because you want to honor your God Almighty. That is today and always been daddy to creation. We thank you Father. We thank you, Father, for you are the great and awesome God. We serve Almighty God. Now you Arabs come close in this have a chat. Listen, you must get saved. You must stop your privileging. You must stop your falsehoods, O oh Arabs. You must stop hurting your women. Your children. You must stop hurting your neighbors. You must stop the violence. God is not a God of violence. He's a God of peace. Contrality. Shalom is what God is. What you are serving is a false God. He is Satan. He's Moloch and he's Satan. And that's who you serve, Arabs. You do not... One of his fallen names that he took with him. Satan's fallen name that he took with him was Allah. Allah is not God. It's Satan. That's his affectionate name that God gave him. Because he was a great cherubim at one time. And he fell from what he was supposed to do. And he fell into a great dissolution. This is what you are falling into when you serve these things. Stop following a false god. Daniel, the book of Daniel, talks about that you would do these things. Do you serve a strange, false god? And you have done so. But the good news today, O oh Arabs, you can be saved. You can be glorified. You can become holy Arabs. You can... Bring holiness of God back in your families and your friends. You can clear your names and become what Ishmael was great that you are not anymore. Ishmael was great because he acknowledged Yahweh. And he got along with his Hebrew brothers. He was cast away for a short time so that Isaac can grow up. And to the righteousness of God. Because he looked on his older brother in a lot of cases. And God wanted him to look on no further than God Almighty. The Lord wants to heal the wretch that was put through your falsehoods. God wants you to know that over 2,000 years ago he sent his image. Came a sonship. To, to bring back all the sons and lost daughters that's on this earth back to him. This day, choose life. This day to get saved, O Arabs, and become holy Arabics that serve the mighty God that are Christian Arabs, that serve the ways of the Lord, their God, and not stray from the covenants of God no longer. 
that strengthens their peoples with great knowledge of understanding and does good things to each other and their neighbors, fellow nations. This is what the Lord wants of you, to be saved and saved out of the pit of snares of the devil that's trampled over a whole culture. And get right with God. Get right with the Savior and Lord that saved your soul. He was willing to die on the cross for you, all your Arabs and all the lost tribes of Israel that scattered all the earth to make, make up most of the earth. This is the day of salvation for your Arabs. This is the day of revival and holiness in your heart. Now I will talk to the lukewarm Christians and Jews that are not walking right with the Lord. Don't you think it's time to get right with God? Don't you think it's time to acknowledge what the Torah says, the gospel say, and get saved in your, in your spirit and renewed in your heart today? Pray this prayer with me. All you heathen in the world as well, that do not want to be heathen no longer, pray this prayer as well. Pray this, pray this prayer. Surrender your transgression and your sins to the Lord, for he loves you. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body, as Lord and Savior of my life, love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, my friends, you're born again. Welcome to the family of God, little brothers and sisters. For we pray for you now. We pray that the Lord strengthen you. The Lord protects you from all the, the arrows of the enemy. And may the, the arrows of the enemy fall to the ground and not harm you as you grow in the Lord. And I pray for the right people to come in your path, a hunger for God's word and prayer. We thank you and praise you. And amen. Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus, Yahweh saves. Now I want to remind you that you got to get in God's word. And I want you to go to the second olive tree, the New Testament. Read all the Johns. First one you'll encounter is the Gospel of John, and that's perfectly well the first one you should start with. And then later on, you, you look in the scripture, you're going to see the epistles of John, 1, 2, and 3. I want you to read those too. Take your time. And the last, the third John, it's small, but it has its own um, things that you need to understand within it. Remember, small things can be great too as well as a uh, huge read can be as well. And then I want you to go to the first solid tree, the Old Testament. I want you to read Deuteronomy and Proverbs that we have been discussing about. Read those as well. And take your time reading these five books in the Bible. And uh, when you're done and you fully understand them, then I want you to cut loose on the whole Bible. Wherever the Lord leads you at that particular time in the, in the Word, just read it. And understand it. And remember, go thought to thought. Remember, it, where it indents is where a thought starts. Where it stops the indention to another one, that's where it stops. And that's how I want you to study God's Word. I know they got, they got um, you know, uh, all these numbers and things, kind of ignore them. Just use them for reference where each thought is. From that thought to that, it makes it easier. But where where you really study God's word correctly and understand what it's really saying is thought to thought. Where it indents, where it stops indenting. Some Bibles don't have that. And so in that case, um, I suggest get Bible. They didn't that it indents properly because that's the way it needs to be read not the way it's read these days wrongly this is why there's so many fights in the churches and the synagogues because all these extra things that they added uh, chapters and verses that they shouldn't have if anything the chapters should not be there you know they used to do it by the number go to a thousand uh, 15 or something that's how they used to do it 
You know, they didn't even separate it Old and New Testament. But I think that there's a there's a, a prophecy within doing that though. But but the but these chapters and verses was put in by the Catholic Church. A bishop did that. It wasn't even properly done through prayer, through everybody looking into it. It, it really doesn't need to be done because all you need to do is say from this chapter and the, on this page of that chap of, of, of that that page number I want you to go to the third thought down that's how they used to do it and they were fine with it and they they actually learned more doing it that way you know so that's actually how you're supposed to study the word properly and it's not being done this is why there's a lot of controversies with between churches and wars and all kinds of garbage that God is saying, what in the world are you guys doing? You know, so if you want to study God's word properly, that's another thing. That's a very healthy habit to, to be is to study God's word healthily, study it good, and then honor it. Take some time, each thought and this kind of. Ponder about it and pray about it and then go to the next thought. You know, that's another healthy way of studying God's word. First, honor God's thoughts of, of each of the word and then praying about them in between thoughts. That way you really are taking in God's word. And because remember, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5 says, The word was made flesh and dwell with us. The word is made flesh and dwells with us. It's a dual meaning. Meaning, that he's not, if he's the word, that means all the words of the Bible. We, when we take them in, they become flesh in us. And we become better people from it. We become more educated people. We become uh, more aware of what we should be doing in life. You know, this is why the old time rabbis and and uh, pastors used to look at them and say, you read your Bible, you read your Torah, you know, that kind of thing. And kind of got on our cases, shook our hands real brisk and said, well, you know, prayer is important too. Remember. You know, because they like the potlucks in the old days. We're going to have this potluck later. Make sure you come now. Get in your word. That kind of thing. But, uh, you know, because, you know, us ministers, we like our food. But that's another deal. But, you know, that's what they did. They made sure you got in your word. Nowadays, they don't do that. And, and if, if I have any pastors, rabbis, I want you to make sure. Make sure your congregation's reading God's word. Okay, reading God's word, reading the word. It doesn't matter where it's read, it's as long as you, they're opening their Bible and reading it. It could be Deuteronomy, it could be Proverbs, it could be uh, one of the epistles of Paul, but it's read the word, study it. Study thyself to be approved by God. Remember, Hosea talks about that. Amen. So we got to do that. We got to we remind our congregations to read their word. You know, to let it develop well in their souls, their hearts, their minds, their spirits. Amen. Because that's where healing begins is, is reading that word, is understanding it and prayer, fellowshipping with God and fellowshipping with other like minded believers that love God, too. Amen. So I said all this long wind stuff to to bring out these things to to uh, people that maybe thought maybe they don't know about it, but now you do, amen. So now I want to pray over the sick and heavy lady. Look upon our afflictions, plead our case, redeem us speedily for your name's sake, for you are a mighty redeemer. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the Redeemer. Healer, O Yahweh, we are healed. Save us and we will be saved. For you are our praise. Grant perfect healing to all our ailments. For you, O mighty King Yahweh, our faithful, merciful healer. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the healer of the sick of the twelve tribes of Israel and the Christian Arabs. Selah. We thank you, Lord, for your healing to take place. We pray over the 12 tribes of Israel that makes up 
85 percent of the earth we pray over the, the arabs now that they that the christian ones will be healed and saved and even the non ones through the healing they testify and get saved through that way too and we thank you father we bind cancer we bind all these elements of diseases we cast them down we command them to leave we, we thank you, Yahweh, for your holiness. We thank you, Yahweh, that you are holy. And through holiness, we, we proclaim victory. And through victory, we, we have the joy of the Lord, the peace that passes all on us, standing on our hearts and minds now with celebration. And we thank you, Father. In your name we pray, Yahweh says, Yeshua, Jesus, we pray, amen. Let's end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness that brings the peace that passes all understanding be with you. Nothing severed, never broken, all complete, because the king of peace, Yahweh says, the Messiah, Yeshua Jesus, has entered your heart, your mind. And we thank you, Father, for your great peace upon them now. We thank and praise you, and Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh saves. Amen. Be at peace. Be, be a victory and revival and holiness with God today. Shalom to you. God loves you. I love you. Keep doing what's good and moral in God's sight. Win people to the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brother and sister.